Welcome to episode 10. Today we will be looking at the last Nintendo Color TV game, a version of Block Breakout. It is still the most sought after console from this first generation series. But before we dive in on the last of the Color TV consoles, I wonder how many viewers here played along and tried guessing our last episode's brain teaser called What in the World? Did you know what that little controller and D-pad were from? It was, as you can see from the picture, another treasure from 1984. It was also somewhat of a Nintendo oddity amongst the game and watch series that was ever so popular back then, the two-player Micro vs. System. There were three near-identical consoles in this game and watch series, the game shown here was the one they called Boxing. I hope you played along and even better I hope you guessed it too. Please watch until the end of this episode for another brand new What in the World challenge to play. Color TV game Block Kuzushi is likely the best Nintendo first generation console from the 5 issued. Based upon their successful arcade game, Block Fever, from 1978. Designed by Takahiro Izushi, the home console version of that arcade launch, is shown in its off-white retail packaging here. This system was the first ever Nintendo console to be produced in-house. And as a consequence the Nintendo brand name and logo featured prominently on the actual console. To promote the Block Breakout console, Nintendo staged many in-store competitions. Participants received certificates as well as various medals and awards. These events and competitions were a sign of things to come from this brand and its marketing outlook. Be careful with the fixed antenna cable, if you wrap the wire around the console for storage, the cable burns itself chemically into the console's plastic housing. Most consoles have at least a few scars due to this issue. You may remember from our previous episodes that this first generation of games consoles was a series of five separate systems marketed by Nintendo. All five units were offered for sale only in Japan. This particular system, the Breakout Block game would also be the first console in the series that did not have a battery option, relying instead on mains electricity only. Seen here is the control panel. The large oval button is the service button, which allows one ball to be launched upon depression. The button to its right, the small round white button is the on or off slider, or better still, we'll call it the power button. The large red button is the reset control. The largest slide control toggle is for choosing game variations from 1 to 6. The next smaller slider controls offers the choice of 3, 5, or 7 balls each life, making the game easier or harder to complete. The large round control, the wheeled style dial directs the on-screen bat left or right. This directional dial is very good, it feels sharp in operation allowing for precise control of the bat or paddle in play. Here you can see at the bottom of the screen the bright white bat or paddle, which moves in sync with me turning the wheel controller on the console. The launch button, which is the large oval button on the right, will serve the first of three balls available with this setup shown here. The white ball descends diagonally at a slower speed. Glancing off the white paddle and returning to the multicolored brick wall above. Bricks disappear if struck, and add to your score. Bricks are valued as follows, the blue score 2 points, the green score 4, and the orange score 8 points. The top right hand side of the screen shows I have a single ball remaining from the original 3. The top left number is my score, around 18 points and rising. I am now launching my last ball. I actually managed to strike a green brick for 4 points. Notice the increase in ball speed. If I were able to strike an orange brick it would increase further. The three zeros in the middle at the top of my screen is the high score. Much like the arcade version, the idea is to beat the high score. With this home console having no internal memory the high score is lost after the console is turned off. Because I'm an awesome player, and time is a concern in videos, I'll deliberately lose at around the 44 point mark. Okay, I had to throw the game, but you can see the service button does nothing, the game is over. But notice the reset transfers my score to the high score in the middle at the top. If it allowed me my three initials next to the high score like the arcade version I'd be in heaven. And I've already started the second game on this console. In this game there's a void space between the double layer of blue bricks and the top three layers of higher ranking green and orange bricks. The idea is to break through the blue layer and let the ball bounce between the blue bricks and the higher scoring upper levels. Sadly I'm already down to my last ball, you'll also notice the high score is once again 0 in this second selection, the 44 I achieved in the previous game will have be retained and saved, if I return to that game choice it will reappear. Okay, I was briefly able to get the ball between the blue and green and orange layer. 
The score jumped from 22 all the way up to 40 in the blink of an eye. The ball speed was very fast, and despite my status as one of the best players in the world, I'll need to settle for a final score of 48. That might be a new personal best. The third game choice is shown here. In essence it is identical to the first game choice, however there is another brick layer below the bat. This additional layer at the base of the screen has no value in the scoring process. The bright green bricks at the base of the screen act as a backstop. If the ball beats you, the backstop bricks sacrifice themselves and return the ball into play. The struck brick will disappear, no score is added as these are your team's bricks. Although the instructions are in Japanese, the illustrations are both informative and understandable. Here Nintendo offers several options to orientate the console to better react to the various gameplays. Simply by reorientating the console the player is better able to interface with a particular game mode. This is a methodology seen even in more modern systems, shown here is the classic Nintendo Switch, notice how Nintendo still offer control orientation advice for this system, although over 40 years separate these two machines the premise is still much like the block breakout console instructions presented the information back then. Okay, let's head back to the gameplay. You return to an impressive 46 points and rising. All backstop bricks are still present. Erg, and darn it. 52 points and I lose my first backstop brick. While jumping ahead, I finish on an impressive 136 points. Let's play game number 4, with 4 fingers. The select control must be fully engaged to function. If it's between choices it will present a wrong pattern and will not launch a ball. Number 4 is this evenly spaced set of lines, also shown on the console. The score this time is driven by how long your ball survives in play. Bricks don't add score, and are erased on both upward and downward direction. Interestingly the bricks do not deflect the ball, merely disappear if struck. However, the ball speed increases as in previous games. A final score of 469 was achieved, that was game 4, so let's move on to game number 5. After another glitch, caused by not fully engaging the slider, we begin after a glitchy start. The bricks are an upside down diamond, with the brick scores as previously stated, although the score here is disabled. Due to the glitch game number 5 ends in a zero score, but the gameplay was still fun. Number 6 is our last offering, it appears as a UFO shape, with the highest pink bricks in the center of mass. Notice once again the score is time based and not brick score based, however the higher rated bricks increase ball speed as previously shown. Another similarity shared with the arcade version is the fact that the green bricks here are permanent. Hopefully you'll have enjoyed the 6 games presented here, albeit briefly and with the odd operator error resulting in a glitch. This error underscores the need to fully engage the game selector slider correctly each time. Before we finish up this episode, I'd like to ask that question again. What in the world? Can you identify this Nintendo item from just this photo of a button in the word reset? Join me for episode 11 to find out. A sincere thank you for watching. Celebrating our second subscriber as this episode airs. I'd like you to like our episodes, better still follow us or even think about subscribing to keep our channel open here. The design and pace of our adventures is how I'd like to see my Nintendo treasures presented, so a final thank you for joining me on this epic journey.